right now at T-Mobile. We're getting rid of the trade-in headache. Switch with our Magenta Max plan and get the epic iPhone 12 with 5G on us. No trade-in required. Check out this great 4K video. I even posted it with 5G way out here. A new iPhone 12 on us. No trade-in required. T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. With 24 monthly bill credits plus tax for well-qualified buyers. Contact us before canceling to continue bill credits or credit stop and balance on required finance agreement due. Up to two per account. T-Mobile is the largest 5G network and named fastest by Open Signal Awards in USA 5G user experience report July 2021. Details at T-Mobile.com. Millions of Americans are getting back to work. CareerBuilder calls it the great rehire. And we want to help you get the best jobs before everyone else. CareerBuilder gives you the competitive edge to get the job you want, at the salary you want, with the benefits you want. We even send job alerts so your perfect job lands right in your inbox. Go to CareerBuilder.com today or get left with whatever jobs are left. Find your next job fast at CareerBuilder.com. CareerBuilder is made for people who have that thing. You know, those superpowers that make you good at your job, the skills you bring to work. And CareerBuilder knows those skills make you right for other jobs too. Higher paying jobs with benefits, jobs you never thought of trying. Are you a people person? Work from home as a customer service rep. Are you organized and like driving? Become a delivery driver. You have the skills it takes, and CareerBuilder.com has the jobs to get you hired fast. Visit CareerBuilder.com. Thanks for listening to the Best of the Doug Gottlieb Show podcast. Be sure to catch us live every weekday from 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 12 to 3 Pacific on Fox Sports Radio. Find your local station for the Doug Gottlieb Show at FoxSportsRadio.com or stream us live every day on the iHeartRadio app by searching FSR. This is the best of the Doug Gottlieb Show on Fox Sports Radio. What up, Doug Gottlieb Show? Fox Sports Radio. Hope you're having a great day. The Doug Gottlieb Show broadcast live from overcast, cool, drizzly Southern California. September 1st. Sports back, people in stands back, Tua back, year two with the Miami Dolphins. Now, this is some pro football talk, um, Mike, Mike Florio's site. He said, in response to our Tuesday report that Stephen Ross, quote, really wants to acquire Texans quarterback um, Deshaun Watson, Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald tweeted, the Dolphins are pushing back on Mike, Mark, Mike Florio report that Steve Ross really wants Deshaun Watson. The Dolphins now tell local reporters that Ross does not feel, does not force football decisions and believes in Tua. I believe that to be true, but it doesn't make Florio's reporting wrong. Okay. So um, part of the question is when did all of this stuff come out? Right. When when was the he wanted Deshaun Watson? And I actually, I believe, I told you all season long, I watched with intrigue in Tua Tungavailoa. And I was utterly and completely unimpressed. He was little. He didn't have a ton of pop to his arm. He's never been a great athlete. And all of the acumen and intelligence and ability to lead, it's, it's not like... He, his processing speed was so great that he was Peyton Manning out there. He's a good player. But a guy who people a year, two years ago were dumping games for or proceeded to be dumping games for, that's a bit much. Anyway, uh, we waited two days ago for Brian Flores to just say to us our quarterback. Well, guess what he did today? I will say that Tua is our quarterback. I think he's had a good training camp. I think he's made a lot of uh, progress. I think he's uh, made a lot of improvement. And, you know, we're, we're, we're pleased with where he is. He's going about his preparations for New England the way he should be. And uh, that's where we are as a team. I don't know if I can be more clear. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many times you want to say, you know, you know I, I don't know how much more clear I can be here. Two as a starter. I mean, do I need to say it again? I mean, I will. Okay. Um, Miami Dolphins coach, I don't need to be more clear. Damn, that sounds like Nick Saban. I don't know how else I can say it, guys. I've said it three different occasions. Well, then I guess I have to say it. I'm not going to be the Alabama coach. I think I've said this over and over and over again. So some of this is it's not his fault, right? You always feel like this goodwill hunting. It's not your fault, Will. It's not your fault. Um, 
because you got Nick Saban, who's a Dolphins head coach, granted about the University of Alabama, or even the Tua is our quarterback. Remember Lovey Smith? This is Lovey Smith getting ready for the Super Bowl. He said Rex Grossman's our quarterback. They kept asking him about uh, about other options. Rex Grossman's our quarterback. Rex is our quarterback. So my guess is that I told you I think Houston wanted this out there. I don't think there's any question about it, that Houston wants to poison that well because they feel like Miami poisoned their well going back when he originally requested a trade. And then the maybe the more interesting point is that Stephen Ross, the owner's own, and if Stephen Ross wants Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson's cleared, and he says go get him, they're going to go get him. You know, it, it's fascinating. I I remember I I was. Um, you guys remember I did sideline for a Dolphins game, Dolphins Bears. I you guys remember that. But, but here's where, like, the statement that he has nothing to do with player personnel is, I mean, it's, it's completely inaccurate. It just is. Go and look at, at their team. Uh, it, and it's funny, I had, there's a, a player on the team that I loved in terms of his speed and his athleticism. No, I'm not talking about a Will Forwell. I'm talking about Jakeem Grant. Okay, Jakeem Grant plays at Texas Tech. And the story that I was told was that he was playing late at night in the Big 12 and Stephen Ross watch, avidly watched his college football, watched Jakeem Grant and told the front office, hey, remember this guy's name, Jakeem Grant. I want him next year in the draft. And sure enough, in the NFL draft, I don't know, it was the sixth round or something like that, who'd they go out and draft? Jakeem Grant. Now, that, does that mean that they're absolutely positively going to, you know, turn the thing over? Six round pick, by the way. Absolutely going to positively turn the thing over to, to their owner? No, but owner's own. And if he decides, hey, this is the guy I want, that's the guy they'll get. But I also think we have to understand that there's a possibility he's evolved on the topic. We got to be fair with it. Whenever he wanted Deshaun Watson, that could have been the offseason. That could have made its way to Florio, could have made its way to Houston. And Houston could have been the ones who said that and leaked that out. But (laughs) Brian Flores, I don't know how many times I got to say it. God, that sounded like Nick Saban, didn't it? I will say that Tua is our quarterback. I think he's at a good training camp. I don't know if I can be more clear. (laughs) I mean, I don't know how many times you want to say it, you know. You know, I, I don't know how much more clear I can be here. Two is a starter. I mean, do I need to say it again? I mean, I will. I don't know how else I can say it, guys. I've said it three different occasions. Well, then I guess I have to say it. I'm not going to be the Alabama coach. I think I've said this over and over and over again. It's too great, right? It's too good. Too good. What do you think, Byer? What do you think's really going on there in Miami? Because this is not good for a quarterback who came off a disappointing yeah. first year, and this to be out there. I, 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 I do. I think they'd like an upgrade. Yes, I just, I, I you know, Brian Flores is just in a in a really tough spot because there's nowhere that they can go, and you're not going to give up three first round picks. I think that they're they're okay with it, but I, I, I mean, they got to go with Tua. They got to go with Tua. That's what I think that they think. I think it's way too early to give up to figure out who he is um you know let this season ride out maybe it'll work out in the end for them but to think that they've already had their decision made on Tua to me is is I I just I I think that they need to take more time okay that's fair I I think it's completely and totally fair that they they need to I I I think what they need to know is is Tua good enough yeah I, I don't think anybody any no one would argue like Tua can move. Deshaun Watson's a gazelle. Tua can throw. Deshaun Watson's got a great arm. You know, Tua's a a good name. Deshaun Watson's a a huge name and has a gigantic presence. Now, there's a couple things we don't know if Deshaun Watson comes out. um, You know, comes out with able to play in the NFL ever again, or when he's able to play in the NFL. Additionally, they're not the only suitor. And once we get to mid-year, there'll be a bunch of teams that want a quarterback next year, 
And you talk about rolling the dice with the college quarterback or getting Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson feels like the smarter play. Sure. Yeah. I, I just I look at how the Dolphins have been built, and that's been kind of my point is it's been a slow build. Uh, and granted, there was a lot to build, Doug, but it's taken a couple of years. And now we feel like, you know, last year they were on the verge. Um, and last year was a, a crazy year. But to all of a sudden make the immediate decision to trade, you know, if they were to do that deal, to trade so much after you did this slow build and then immediately, it's not a knee-jerk decision on Tua, but remember, Tua's, Tua was put into the starting lineup on, on a bye week that they didn't plan because of the rescheduling of other games last year, which mm-hmm. caught everybody off guard, including Ryan Fitzpatrick and I, I'm sure Tua himself, but it just showed that the plan was that Tua was going to start after the bye week. Uh, maybe that there's even just fault in that and having their plan laid out and how they were going to do it instead of just feeling things out. Um, it, last year was not ideal, but I just don't think you use the fifth overall pick on a guy in the draft and then immediately come to an ultimate conclusion 10 games into his career on a season that was just unlike any other I, off of hip I, surgery off of hip surgery i mean like, the, the big thing is off of hip surgery like he had a broken hip so i don't think we got a clear it, 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 well, yeah it wasn't it's not a normal year it wasn't nothing about it was normal um but there there wasn't i think they saw what we all saw and i talked about it all last year which was it just wasn't a lot of there, there. There wasn't the it throws and plays that you would have expected. Now, we, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, and you don't necessarily need that, and he may be fine and good enough. You're like, you know, we already have him. Sure. Something cost. You know, year year three and year four, you don't make a ton, as a, even as a high draft pick um, rook, uh, third year and fourth year quarterback. So, you know, as they look forward to the future, there may be a cost benefit analysis like, yeah, we love Deshaun Watson, but he's going to eventually want a new contract. And in the meantime, we got two on the cheap for the next two years. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it just that, that makes too much sense. It just just to 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 make the judgment and listen, and it's not saying that two is going to be the guy, but you invest that fifth overall pick and and you put it into you invest that into Tua to make the decision this quickly doesn't make sense. And it does make more sense to wait until next year because if the Dolphins, you know, if, if Tua doesn't work out and they end up going 9-8 and eight or 8-9, eight and nine, then you're maybe more willing to do that because of what you built. I just – it's so quick. And, and the fact that Herbert went right after him, which is – I don't know if it affected Trubisky in Chicago or not and being in the Watson-Mahomes class, but it's what we always ended up pointing to. And I, I don't think that helps Tua in that scenario. And it's just No question. No question. And look, I, I think the Chargers would have taken Tua if, if, if Tua sure. was on the board with Justin Herbert. I, I, he was evaluated by many people. They were like, well, you know, we'll take a chance. People just missed. We just missed. Um, Want to feel old? Asante Samuel's son is in the NFL. That, that. <laughs> And Asante Samuel said something about one of his former coaches, Bill Belichick. It may surprise you. Be sure to catch live editions of the Doug Gottlieb Show weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific on Fox Sports Radio and the iHeartRadio app. It's crazy how much we have to pay for outdated, impersonal health care. And even crazier that we all just accept it. It's time to face facts. Health care is backwards. Luckily, there's forward a new approach to primary care that's surprisingly personal and refreshingly straightforward. Forward never makes you feel like just another patient. Backed by top-rated doctors and the latest tech, Forward gives you access to personalized care whenever you need it. Using in-depth genetic analysis and real-time blood work, Forward's top-rated doctors provide you with in-depth insights to better understand your genetics, mental, and physical health. They then create custom, easy-to-understand plans to help guide you to achieving long-term health. With Forward, you get unlimited in-person visits with your doctor and access to care anytime via the Forward app, all for one flat monthly fee. It's time to stop accepting backwards health care and start moving your health forward. Visit GoForward.com today to learn more. That's GoForward.com. Hey, it's Wilmer Valderrama from Essential Voices with Wilmer Valderrama Podcast. Lo siguiente es un mensaje de State Farm. Some stories deserve to be told. Incredible, but totally true stories. Stories that we knew nothing about, but that now we want to know everything about. 
Stories that were invisible but have found a way to travel from ear to ear. Stories that captivate us, move us, and even teach us. Stories that used to be secret but that are now a podcast. State Farm celebrates the fact that those stories can now be enjoyed by all. And that's why we want to share a bit of information that we can all enjoy as well. State Farm has surprisingly great rates on car insurance. Yes, for real. If you need to insure your car, don't hesitate to talk to a State Farm agent and take a look at the solutions that match your needs. It's easy. For surprisingly great rates that fit any budget, como un buen vecino, State Farm está ahí. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> <laughs> And now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Boom! What up, America? Doug Gottlieb Show. Fox Sports Radio. Hope you're having a great, great day. Wherever you're listening, however you're making this part of your day, thanks so much. I'm Doug Gottlieb, in for Doug Gottlieb. (laughs) Uh, So, we're getting closer. We're T-minus, I don't know, 27 hours until college football gets officially underway. We had the unofficial official last weekend. This is the official official the real, real, as the kids say, we'll get to that upcoming, but a lot of, a lot of vaccination discussions, a lot of vaccination discussions. And yesterday on the show, I told you that Cam Newton didn't get cut because he wasn't vaccinated. It just makes it easy to cut him if he's not vaccinated. It's just another, it's death by a thousand cuts. So I was looking for some sort of backup to essentially tell you that Cam Newton's not the quarterback that he ever used to be, right? And and I don't know if this is, you, you get people that say he doesn't want to be a backup. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know. You don't take $3.5 million, that's backup money, unless on some level you think you can be a backup. Nonetheless, Cam Newton... Right now, his prospects are that of being a backup or sitting and waiting for somebody to get hurt. Maybe his phone rings. Maybe it doesn't. I was looking for some sort of confirmation. I needed a sign. Somebody, oh, this is Bill Belichick when asked if Cam Newton not being vaccinated factored into his decision to cut him. The number of players and coaches and staff members that have, you know, been infected by COVID in this training camp who have been vaccinated is a pretty high number. So I, I wouldn't lose sight of that. Yeah, that, that's, that's, a, that's a non-answer answer. Because the difference, obviously, is Cam wasn't necessarily infected. It was that he was in the pro- he, he didn't follow protocol, so he was in the program because he left town. Mm-hmm. By the way, this is a really smart guy on radio yesterday. Meaning me saying that it, it wasn't about the vaccination. Like Belichick said without saying, did it annoy him? Sure. Did it frustrate him? Absolutely. But it also opened a door for Mac Jones to have all of the snaps be the guy. And he took advantage of it. And while uh, availability is part of your ability, That's not the only reason that he lost his job. He lost his job mostly because through their evaluation, one, the finances of what they're going to pay Mac Jones and how they want. But mostly it sounds like it's just a football decision that they feel like Mac Jones is the better quarterback. Not, not hasn't had the better career, but the better quarterback. And that's what I said. That's what I told you. That we're, we're dealing with this dated information. I don't know why we do it. You know, it's, it's the same thing as the Colin Kaepernick deal with, with EA Sports. 
You can tell me Colin Kaepernick can still throw a football to raid him ahead, even if it's a video game, ahead of the, the sitting rookie of the year who set rookie passing marks when Kaepernick was good in 2013 and it's 2021. Like, that's, you know, is it stupid? It's almost offensive and it's dealing with really, really dated data. Cam Newton is not a star quarterback. He's not a starting quarterback. He's a guy who will have to be a backup in order to be in the league. But all of that is new information, is, is, a, is his current situation, not what he's known for. So Belichick saying, hey, look, man, there's lots of guys. That's, that's not it. That's not the reason. He's telling you it's about football. It's about playing the position and that Cam Newton, whatever you think of him historically, however he'll go down in the Carolina Panthers uh, records books, however the NFL will always perceive him, football, a Heisman Trophy winner, an All-American, a national champion, a number one overall pick, a, a, a game changer in terms of his speed, size, athleticism, and arm, and a guy who won the NFC and got to a Super Bowl, but he's had leg injuries as well as two shoulder surgeries. And he's bounced, you know, he, he bounced from the Panthers to the Patriots and now needs a job. And after throwing just eight touchdown passes, three in the last game and 10 interceptions, here's a guy who's no longer a starter. All of the information, all of the data, all of the feelings you have about who Cam Newton is, that's from three, four, five, six years ago. Not this year. Not this year. All right, got a great show for you. Um, got some sound. Brian Flores talking about Tua. Wait to hear what Asante Samuel said about Bill Belichick and then kind of doubled down earlier today. Uh, Danny Cannell is going to join us in the third hour. Kevin Clark from The Ringer in the second hour. And Daniel Jeremiah will be joining us uh, in 20 minutes here on the show. I do love, though, that people like to talk about players getting infected by COVID when they've been vaccinated. People talk about it all the time. Well, you can still get, but there's a, a minuscule number of infected players who, excuse me, of, of anybody who's infected, but has been vaccinated who ends up in the hospital. And that's really the point of it. Really the point of it. But I, I understand. I believe what Belichick was saying, which is he wasn't being anti-vax. He was just simply stating I could look, lots of guys have missed games because of COVID. Cam Newton's no different. We made our evaluations purely based upon football. And if that's the case, and I believe it mostly to be the case, then they're telling you Cam Newton is not as good as Mac Jones. And that may be really hard for people to take because you're like, no, 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 I think of Cam Newton as a superstar. You know? I think of Cam Newton as a superstar. And the problem with thinking of Cam Newton as a superstar is it's been about five years since he's been that superstar. All right, coming up next. Urban Meyer can be accused of a lot of things. Saying the wrong thing now appears to be one of them. But I actually don't think he's done anything wrong. We'll get into more, more Vax talk. In the NFL. Next on the Doug Gottlieb Show. This is the best of the Doug Gottlieb Show on Fox Sports Radio. Hey, everybody. I'm Aditi Kinkabwala. And I'm Mike Yam, and we are the hosts of NFL Explained. It's the podcast where football fanatics come to learn everything they always wanted to know about football. But didn't know who to ask. They can ask us now. And, of course, we're going through all of these topics, Aditi. And I know you and I are so excited to start disseminating nothing but football nugs. Well, and Mike, I've got questions of my own. Like, do you know why the Packers are named the Packers? I do know that it has nothing to do with Pac-Man, and it has everything to do with cheese packing not cheese with meat meat packing it was a meat packing company that put 
$500 up for the uniforms. Or how about this? How about like what constitutes an actual catch in football, which I would imagine all my years of covering college football is a different answer now covering the NFL. And unfortunately, Mike, I don't think that we will possibly have enough time to figure that one out. But the point is, you're going to be able to join us every Thursday to talk about every interesting detail about the game we love. It's NFL Explained. Listen on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The stories that are affecting the Black community are being covered on the Black Information Network. Not a show or a podcast. BIN is a 24-7 news network covering stories from a Black perspective. Listen to the Black Information Network on the iHeartRadio app and get news for and by the Black community anywhere Anytime. Keeping you informed, keeping you engaged. The Black Information Network and BINnews.com. For decades, this area has been a hotbed for paranormal sightings. Jeremy! This is a strange place, this part of the country. Ed, where are you? Something about it just doesn't feel right. Dad? Strange things were happening back then, and strange things are happening again now. I think I found something. This otherworldly corner of southeastern Massachusetts, the Bridgewater Triangle. iHeartRadio and Grim and Mild presents Bridgewater, starring Misha Collins, Melissa Ponzio, and Nathan Fillion. Created by Aaron Mankey and written by Lauren Shippen. Listen to Bridgewater now on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And learn more at grimandmild.com slash bridgewater. Doug Gottlieb Show, Fox Sports Radio. You know, you're, you're going to get people saying Urban Meyer shouldn't have said this, but somebody's going to have to explain to me why. Here's Urban Meyer talking about vaccinations and whether or not they'd be a factor in who he'd keep and who he'd cut. Everyone was considered uh, that was part of the production. What's his, you know, let's start start talking about this. And then also, is he vaccinated or not? Uh, can I say that that was a decision maker? was certainly in consideration. Yeah, that's that, that's very honest. It's very honest. And it it's totally fair. And the fallback is like, look, if you're not vaccinated, look at all the things that we have to go through. Now, remember, remember, if it was the deciding factor. Then a lot of these guys wouldn't be kept because they have one of the lowest uh, percentage of players vaccinated in the National Football League. If it was the deciding factor. Is it a factor? Yeah. It's it's the exact same thing I was talking about with Cam Newton. It's a thousand little cuts. You get keep and you get cut. Like, if you're close, if it's on the borderline, and you're like, yeah, man, and and by the way, he's not vaccinated. Like, ah, God, what a pain. Just move on. You know, let's move on. That's what they're saying. They're not saying... We, we don't ever think with like anybody who's not vaccinated should play in the NFL. But if, if there's two guys of similar talent, similar makeup, and you're trying to make a call, it's something very, very small, which can push you over the top. You know, he didn't believe he doesn't like the vaccination, but he's all in and he got vaccinated. I, I you know, that, that, that scores points with me. I don't have to worry about him testing. I don't have to worry about uh, where he where he goes after the game, how he travels. I don't have to worry on our bye week. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. It doesn't mean being unvaccinated will get you cut. So the whole world kind of freaking out about it. The Jaguars released a statement this morning saying the team didn't release any players on Tuesday because of their vaccination status. One day after what you heard what Urban Meyer said, availability is one of the main factors taken into account when making roster decisions. We have vaccinated and unvaccinated players on our roster and no player was released because of their vaccination status. Ultimately, decisions are based upon the player's ability to help the Jaguars win. We educate our players and respect the personal decisions as it pertains to the vaccine, we want to keep our players, staff safe as we comply with protocols related to both the health and safety on game days. Tony Dungy to Andrew Brandt on Twitter. Was there anything wrong with what Urban Meyer said? He said vaccinations status was a factor in decisions. When these rules were instituted, uh, did anybody in their right mind think that the vaccination status would not be considered at all? The answer is no. Everybody knew this was an issue. 
Dana Jeremiah joins us. Uh, he on the 17 road game schedule of the uh, of being the color voice of the L.A. Chargers. Um, how do you think New Orleans playing their home, first home opener in Jacksonville? How do you think that affects the Saints in particular? Well, I mean, I, I think you you definitely lose the the noise advantage that you were hoping was going to be back in your favor after having a year without fans. So. Um, you know, the Superdome's is as loud as it gets. So that's, yeah, that's going to, that's going to definitely be detrimental. But I I think Doug, just based off of, you know, last year, I know, you know, doing the charger games, um, you're almost like, I I don't even care if the fans, if they're rooting for you against you, just give me some juice in the stadium. So even if they're in Jacksonville, I think at least you have a little bit of juice. Uh, Cam Newton is released. Um, I said yesterday, it, people made it out to be the vaccine. I do think that it made it easy on them. But part of the not, not being with the team allowed Mac Jones to take all the first team reps, and he took advantage of said opportunity. But I think the big part is, like, he's just not the quarterback he used to be. Where do you stand on Cam Newton and the logic behind why they released him? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it made a lot of sense. I, I don't, I don't think any of us know the role that the, you know, him being va- unvaccinated had to play. In. And I think it's silly to like, you know, people saying all in like this was why. I mean, nobody knows that, and I am highly doubtful that that was a huge factor in in this decision. To me, it was pretty simple. You, you decide Mac Jones is the best option. Cam is such a uh, kind of a magnetic personality. It's hard to give Mac the keys to the car there with Cam still in the building. Like you just, you, you kind of set yourself up for you have a bad game for Mac Jones. You're a little bit looking over your shoulder. Then Cam can end up having his guys kind of gravitate towards him. It just, it's just better for all parties, for Mac, for the Patriots, and for Cam that once you make that decision to go with Mac, that you, you move on from Cam. I, I thought that was, you know, in, in non-COVID times, I thought that would have been the smart decision, the wise decision. And that's why I think that was, you know, what it came down to more so than whether or not you're vaccinated. Daniel Jeremiah joining us, Doug Gottlieb Show, Fox Sports Radio. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's get around the league a little bit. Saints are going to play in Jacksonville. Saints a team that I think you could see an offensive upgrade maybe with Jameis. How, does it, how, how are they different now when you play in the open air? Well, I, I don't think, uh, you know, in the past we used to talk about with Drew, you know, especially as he got towards the end, you know, being able to play in climate-controlled building was big for him. Well, that doesn't really matter. Jameis has got a huge arm. So I, I don't think it has any kind of a negative impact in terms of how they play uh, f- from that standpoint. So, uh, to me, I think it's, I'm excited to see what the offense looks like. You know, are they going to be a more vertical offense? We saw it in the preseason with Jameis kind of attacking over the top. Can Sean Payton, you know, can he find a way to live with some of the turnovers that, you know, they haven't had a lot of in the past. You're going to have to live with some of those because I think if you ask Jameis to just play a ultra safe brand of football, you're going to, you know, kind of paralyze him and you, you're not going to like what you see. So it's about trying to rein him in a little bit, not trying to completely change him. Okay. Let's, so he took a year and, um, and like he didn't even, I mean, Taysom got the starts last year when, when Breeze was, was out. Is there a year-off scenario for Cam? Did, do you, does he sit out and wait for somebody to get hurt? Does he go and be a backup? Like, what, what, te, what, what's the future like for Cam, Cam Newton? Yeah, I wouldn't be in any hurry if I were him. You know, I, I'm sitting back and waiting. I'm not going to sign, uh, you know, a really, really low number and go in as a backup somewhere. I'm going to sit back and wait and see. You know, you don't want to, you know, throw out names of guys, but you look around the league and there's some really good teams that are very quarterback dependent and, and uh, they don't have great backups in place. So I just sit back and wait. The 17 game season, Doug, we're going to see, you know, some starting quarterbacks get hurt and miss big chunks of time. And I think that would make the most sense for Cam to sit back because you, know, and you can nitpick Cam and say he's not the same guy that he was. When you look at what's available on the market right now, I mean, it's Cam Newton by a mile over your other quarterback options. So, yeah, you're sitting at the front of the line. Just sit back and wait and see who gets nicked up and injured, and, and then you uh, you got a chance to actually have some leverage. Why do you think he's he's so far ahead? I mean, I, 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 the problem is I, I do feel like we're dealing with dated data a little bit, don't we? I mean, like four games last year, less than 100 yards passing. They release him. Doesn't that say he's not the same quarterback? Well, let me put it. Let me answer a question with a question. You are the uh, let's let's give you a team here, the Cleveland Browns. Okay, just to grab a random team. 
you're the Cleveland Browns and Baker goes down and you've got you, Baker's going to be out for four to six weeks. Are you going to sign, uh, you know, Matt Barkley or are you going to sign Cam Newton? Well, I find I, I signed somebody who's played for Kevin Stefanski before. Don't I? Okay. Another way it works. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, the, the options aren't great, is what I'm getting at here, Doug. So yeah, no, no. Yeah, I, look, I agree. Removed. I agree. He if might you're be him. far removed from what he was, but he's right. still. And you saw it in the preseason this year. He still, he still can make some throws. You, you're still, especially if you're talking about a six, you know, six game sample size, where you can say, okay, you can play a little bit like the old Cam in terms of being a little bit reckless. No need to preserve yourself for 16 weeks here. Um, I, I think it's going to be infinitely better than what what you're staring at. I agree with you in, in principle, though. It's better to sit and wait, let somebody get hurt, and then take, that, take a job kind of that way. Dan and Jeremiah joining us, Doug Gottlieb Show, here on Fox Sports Radio. Um, okay, help me out with, with the, the discussion about San Francisco. In the last preseason game, we saw them use both quarterbacks. Yeah. How do you think they proceed early in the season? I don't think any of us know. I'm sure as heck intrigued. Um, and I, if I'm guessing, I'm going to guess that we see, um, you know, once this, this uh, finger's healthy, which shouldn't be too long for Trey Lance, you're going to see him in the mix, even if Jimmy's, you know, the starter. So I, I don't know. I would imagine that's going to be you'll see some short yardage. You'll see some red zone packages. Um, I, I just know it is going to be an absolute nightmare in the run game for teams to deal with this, you know, with just all the different options they can throw at you. And you have, and you now you have with the, one of the best run games in the NFL with a really good run blocking offensive line. And now you can add all the different scheme wrinkles with a 240 pound battering ram, uh, potentially carrying the ball at quarterback. So I just, I don't see them, you know, saying, Hey, Jimmy, you're the starter. Uh, Trey sit on the sideline until Jimmy gets hurt or screws up, and then you go in. I, I think we're going to see him. Uh, he's going to be at some capacity on the field this year. Level of excitement around the Chargers. I'm fired up, man. And look, it's it's uh, it's a team that I'm going to be there each and every week, calling all the games for 17 weeks. So you could say, oh, okay, well that's a selfish uh, excitement, but I really am, man. I think this is the best offensive line, and you've been out there and seen them. Uh, it's the best offensive line I think they've had in probably a decade. Um, if they can stay healthy, they're going to be really good up front. The quarterback is a, is a special, special talent like we saw last year. And if you can keep Derwin James healthy and and uh, and Joey Bosa healthy, there's a lot of there's a lot of impact players. You know, a lot of blue chippers, as we'll say. So I, I'm excited. I think that division is going to be really, really good. I, for my money, if you told me you could only you know see games from two divisions for the entire year, give me the two teams out the two divisions out west. I think they're the best two divisions. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I mean, I think I think the AFC West is has suddenly kind of kind of cranked it up. And you're right. Not only is it is the offensive line, but and this is knock wood, they they seem to have, have been snake bitten with a, a major injury early in the year yeah. for so many different years. And so far, again, we're like a week away. That hasn't happened. Let's get to the Dallas Cowboys. We'll see him um, a week from tomorrow night taking on the defending champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What are people in the league saying about the Cowboys? I think there's, you know, legitimate concern about, you know, not Dak being out there, but just are we going to see, you know, Dak fully healthy and uh, and able to operate like we last saw him out there. So um, I, I think that's TBD. We don't know. You know, so we'll see what it looks like when he gets out there. I think the feeling is they've got a lot of weapons on offense. And if he's if he's healthy and back to normal, that they're going to score a bunch of points. Relying on a lot of young guys on defense, um, I think they'll be better than they were last year. I think Micah Parsons is going to make a big difference, but still relying on some youth in the secondary. I think that's uh, that's the other concern. So what does Dak look like? Nobody knows. And, and how is this new-look defense uh, you know, under Dan Quinn going to come together? So a lot, lot of question marks is what I would say, and that's not an easy way to start against that group. Is Tampa as talented as they, they seem on paper? I don't know where the holes are, you know. Normally you can look at it and say, oh, man, you can, you can attack them here uh, with their offense. You know, this, this offensive lineman is, is man, he's terrible. they they got to hide a couple people. They don't have to hide anybody on offense on their front. And then you look at it on the defensive line, as, as much as they dominated last year, now you add Joe Tryon to the mix. And, you know, Vita Vea missed a chunk of the season last year. He's, he's going to be back fully healthy. He looks dominant. 
Um, so they have talent and depth in their front seven. They've got a young secondary that just got better and better last year that should be at a different place. Yeah, I mean, I, look, if Tom if Tom can just maintain, um, golly, they're going to be a, they're going to be right there again. College football gets underway. Daniel Jeremiah joins us. Of course, he covers the NFL draft for uh, the NFL Network, and uh, I'm I'm interested in Sam Howell. Okay, Sam Howell yeah. is the quarterback for North Carolina, very well respected prospect. We're going to see him t- uh, Friday night, Lane Stadium against the Virginia Tech Hokies. How good is he? He's, you know, I think he's got some Baker Mayfield to him when you watch him, kind of a similar type of build. He's got a live arm, maybe a little bit stronger arm than Baker, uh, but some of that same type of moxie to him. Uh, so that's kind of my comparison for him when I studied him. And I- I'm with you. I- I'm excited to see him. I don't know that he's, you know, to the level of some of these other premier guys we've seen over the last few years. He- he- I don't put him in that category. But I think he's like Baker was coming into Baker's last year. We're like, this guy could sneak into the first round. And lo and behold, Baker launched himself up to the first overall pick. So that's kind of the range that I have for him. If you've seen and you remember what Baker was at Oklahoma, I I see a lot of the same things with this kid. So I'm excited to see him in in Blacksburg against B-Tech. Yeah, oh, oh, no no question. It's going to be really, really interesting to see what Virginia Tech has is they've, you know, this is a big season for Justin Fuente to to get that Mm -hmm. thing completely turned around. Daniel Jeremiah joining us here on the, on the Doug Gottlieb show on Fox Sports Radio. Move the Sticks is the podcast. I encourage you encouraging, I encourage you to download it. Uh, you talk about the AFC West. Teddy yeah. Bridgewater, he won some games in New Orleans, but he had the fewest air passing yards per game in the NFL in NOLA. Then he goes to Carolina and he gets a two-year deal and a year in they're, they're moving on. He's, he's taking over a Denver offense that has dudes you know, dudes to catch the football. Um, but does he make them substantially better? I, I look at, to me, it's a, uh, kind of a caretaker, you know, move where it's just, okay. You think you're at a place where the defense is so good and, and you're pretty, pretty stacked on offense that just make good decisions. Don't take sacks. Don't turn the ball over and you can win games. And I would say, I agree with that approach. Maybe, 10 years ago, but I look inside this division and I mean, the chiefs are going to score points. You know, the Raiders for whatever defensive issues they've had in the past, they're going to score points. The chargers with Herbert, Keenan Allen, and Eckler, they're going to score points. I, I just, I don't know. I, I personally, I, I like the idea of going with Locke and see if, if he can do it. And then if he can't, you've got Teddy as a veteran who would be very comfortable coming in off in, in relief and, and then you can, you know, try and play that brand of football. But I think I would, in other words, I would have come to the plate and taken my hack with Drew, with Drew Locke before basically choking up and trying to put the ball in play with Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. It's, it be just, especially with all the talent they have around, why not take advantage of it when Teddy is notoriously, notoriously conservative with where and how he delivers the football. Um, okay. Uh, there, there are teams where are you on the Giants? They, they made a couple of trades yesterday. What do you expect from them, a team that uh, I would guess they're going to get Saquon Barkley back, but we haven't seen him in live action. They've tried to rebuild that offensive line. And then you got Danny Dimes not, trying not to turn the football over. Where are you in the Giants? Yeah, I mean, the good news for the Giants is the division in which they play. I don't see anybody really running away with it, so I think they can hang around for a while. But the offensive line is a – legitimate concern. Um, I think the tackles both. And when you look at Andrew Thomas, uh, Pert, and, and Nate Solder, those are their three tackles. And I don't think any of the three inspire much confidence at this point in time. So that's going to limit what you can do from a play calling perspective because you got to kind of have to babysit those guys and help them out. So uh, that would really concern me, especially in a division where, you know, the Eagles might not be a great team, but they have a great defensive line. The Cowboys – you know, have some dudes up front. Obviously, Washington, you could say, has the best defensive line in the NFL. Uh, it's not it's not necessarily the right place to have bad tackle play, and, you know, that's going to be something they're going to have to overcome all year long. No question. You get that bad tackle play. Do you think that's why Justin Fields isn't getting the start in Chicago because they're afraid he'll be running for his life? I think they made that decision before they even knew what they had with the offensive line. I think it was just – this has worked in the past sitting, sitting somebody. And so that's what we're going to do. And I, to me, I think 
the fact that they aren't great on the offensive line would almost point me more towards playing him. You can look at it both ways, right? The bad offensive line, he's going to get beat up. It'll be bad for his development. Or bad offensive line, now we can use Justin more in the run game. You have to account for him. That's one less guy we have to block, uh, and he can get away from some of this pressure that's inevitably going to come. Uh, I, I tend to, to, to believe in him enough that I would go that route. Um as opposed to putting Andy Dalton back there and putting a bullseye on his chest. Uh, so, we'll, you know, we'll see. I think a, a lot of times you can get real passionate about this, about whether he should or shouldn't play. And we have to remember that just because Andy Dalton starts game one doesn't mean he starts game two. I mean, this thing can turn quick. Uh, so let's just see how the first quarter of the season plays out before everybody freaks out. Well, how, do you think Mac jo- how do you think Mac Jones will fare with the, pay- with the Patriots? With that one um, – you know, look, he's been he's been outstanding, and you watch all the preseason stuff, decisive, accurate, all that stuff's been great. I think he's still going to be dependent on them being able to really run the football. Mm-hmm. I think if they find themselves in a lot of third third and longs, I think you're going to see teams not really scared of their receiving core. They're going to man up, and they're going to try and smother him because his answers are going to have to come from upstairs, you know, and he's going to have to be able to know where he's where he's got options. Uh, but he's not going to be able to use his legs to get out of trouble. So if there's free rushers and he doesn't have somebody that can uncover right away, he's in trouble. So to me, that's going to be big. If you if they if they can put him in third and fours, third and threes, third and twos, um, they're going to be successful. If they find themselves, and I think they played Miami week one, right? So uh, that's a good defense. They put them in some third and longs. I, I'm curious. I'm, I'm really, really curious to see uh, how he does in that situation. So so am I, and we will find out. He's Daniel Jeremiah. You can download the podcast, move the sticks, see him on the NFL Network, or we'll listen to him call Charger Games on, uh, on our sister station here in Los Angeles. DJ, great stuff. We're uh, eight days away. We'll talk to you next week. Appreciate you, bud. See you. All right, well, happy birthday to, to you, John Ramos. Tomorrow, football, which means football picks. And last week, 4-1 and one of my college football picks. So, I don't know. Like, if you want to make money, listen to me. Uh, I'm going to pat myself on the back because I was right about Cam Newton. It's just not that good anymore. That's it. It's Doug Gottlieb Show, Fox Sports Radio. I want to get back to kissing the cheeks of my grandbabies, making Sunday dinner with a house full of family and lots of laughs. laughs. COVID-19 has changed how we live and how we feel. But now, there are vaccines. And they are the very first step that let us get back to what we miss most. It's okay to have questions. Is it safe? Should I wait? Now, get the facts. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision when vaccines are available to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Uh Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. (laughs) Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. The stories that are affecting the black community are being covered on the Black Information Network. Not a show or a podcast. BIN is a 24-7 news network covering stories from a black perspective. Listen to the Black Information Network on the iHeartRadio app and get news for and by the black community anywhere, anytime. Keeping you informed, keeping you engaged. The Black Information Network and BINnews.com.